Okay. Hello, my name is uh, Ken Wheeler. I am the author of the book Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. I'm currently into the fourth edition of the book. Um, it has been a huge popular success. The book is free, and uh, I've uncovered a lot of uh, secrets as far as the, uh, uh, the geometry of magnetism, the hyperboloid and the toroidal uh, centrifugal divergence, and what makes up the geometry of force divergence and centripetal convergence. I have, over a few months, been contacted by a few people, specifically four people, uh, that they've uh, tried out one person's design on uh, using magnetism and its uh, diamagnetic properties to extract gold. And uh, I'm about to show you in this two-part video series how you're going to uh, make a lot of money more so than you're currently making. And I actually grew up uh, panning for gold, and I always loved uh, hunting for gold. I mean, it's a lot of fun panning for gold. Of course, it's nowhere near as fun as dropping it into a sluice box. Um, how you can actually make a lot more money, and this is no gimmick. I'm giving this information away for free. Like I said, I'm an expert on magnetism. Um, I've written an extremely popular and a very revelation in a very uh, revolutionary book on uh, the nature of uh, magnetic field divergence. But I want to tell you in the second part I'm going to detail the specifics of uh, how uh, this uh, contraption will work that you can build yourself um, to improve far far better gold extraction. But first I have to explain what paramagnetism is specifically diamagnetic materials and uh, what uh, magnetic permeability is and what the dielectric permittivity is using a few different models here so that you'll understand what is going on because people think I made videos about this for that magnetism isn't magnetism and the only way I could show you that is using like a thousand dollar gigantic dangerous magnet like this actually if I lean over this too far the reason I can't use my clip on mic is because the field strength is so enormous um, if I lean over this too far, it actually hurts my eyes. You can actually feel it in your face like a sunburn, a very, very mild sunburn after a short period of time. But I want to show you what is going on so that you'll understand the nature of gold and its diamagnetic properties so you can extract it far, far better. Now, there's one person out there, and I'll point you to his video in the links below. He's doing something right, but um, specifically... Uh, he's also doing something wrong. Now, there's doing something a lot better than what was done before, and there's doing something, you know, infinitely better. So he's doing something right, but he could do a whole, whole lot better. So I'm going to show you why and, the se why and how in the second video, but first I have to demonstrate, uh, you know, uh, magnetic permeability and uh, dielectric permittivity as, for, as far as elements go. Now, this is the Earth's, uh, the universe's most diamagnetic element that's bismuth it means it hates magnetism now you would think that this is a huge magnet and it is equally repulsed at either one of these poles this being uh, one of the poles of the magnet and that's not the case as i've shown in prior videos we have very strong uh, uh low magnetic permeability diamagnetism or what you would want to conventionally call hating magnetism or being repulsed by magnetism is extremely low magnetic permeability but as you can tell from a gauss meter which I've only borrowed one uh, many times, but this is an absolute hardcore fact. You actually have an extremely high Gauss flux here at the center. It tapers off and gets high here near the end. Now, what a Gauss meter won't tell you is that it can only measure uh, flux densities of magnetism, but it can't tell you or differentiate what sort of flux densities there are because they're two totally and radically different types of magnetism. This is centripetal convergence, and this is centrifugal divergence, meaning this is where the real magnetism exists. And in the second video, you're going to understand this. If not clearly, you're going to understand it a whole lot better. So the only way I could show you this is a large surface area of a magnet like this. So we're talking about diamagnetism or hating magnetism, which is equal to extremely low magnetic permeability, just like saying that uh, oil and water have uh, diamagnetic properties from each other. I mean, they, they don't mix together, okay, just to make things really, really simple. Let me show you something else that I've shown you in a prior video. Now, this is actually a brass flywheel on an aluminum compass, and then, of course, it's about 60 to 80% copper, okay? 
So we know the nature of copper that is diamagnetic. Okay, so you would think that since we have an equal Gaussian flux out here at the outer rim as we do in the center, that we would get equal reactions, but that's not the case. Okay. Now if I place the compass here at dead center, a very high uh, centripetal convergence, this uh, precision uh, gyroscope, I said compass, I meant to say gyroscope, uh, this precision gyroscope will sit here and spin until, you know, you roll your eyes in the back of your skull. But we have the same Gaussian flux here as we have here, but what happens if I expose the uh, low magnetic permeability to centrifugal divergence, which occurs at the edge? We have instantaneous slowdown, immediate braking of the flywheel. Here, you know, it'll sit there and spin, not forever. We ultimately have friction in the bearings. But we have completely different attributes right here because what we have at the edge here is we have a toroidal donut. Okay, so what we're really talking about, and since we're talking about gold extraction, and this is going to be a two-part video, and by the way, this is the only video that I would ask someone to make a donation once you actually try this out of, say, $10 or so. The only video, because uh, the people that are going to apply this to your gold sluicing methodologies, you're going to recover a lot more gold. What's going to happen is you're going to, A, recover more gold, recover it uh, in your first two, three, or four whiffles, and I'm going to show you how to do that in the second video with a, uh, uh, with the diagram on how you need to place your magnets. And uh, number three, most importantly, is you're going to have a lot less rejection of gold that is shot out due to water flow and a force in motion shooting the gold out. I'm actually going to show you how to use uh, magnetic permeability and dielectric permittivity as pertains gold and its atomic properties in the use of neodymium iron boron magnets like this, not sumerium cobalts because they're more expensive and uh, they're also more fragile and they're harder to obtain, but like neodymium iron boron ceramics like this, not a huge one like this, obviously, but smaller ones I'll show you in the, in the second video. So let's take a look at something else. So now we know that a Gauss meter can't tell you the difference between this and this. It only understands flux density, okay? We have an intermediate region here, right here, and in the center have high magnetic flux, but this is centripetal convergence, kind of like a drain in a bathtub. Over here we have center of ugal divergence, like the spray in a bath, uh, in, a, uh, in a shower, you know, where we have the water coming out. So a, a Gauss meter doesn't differentiate that. And people think, well, this is magnetism. You know, you got one side here and the other side there. And, you know, this is all magnetism. So we got mag No, that's not the case. And this is going to be really, really important in gold extraction that you understand this in the second video. So we have two different types of magnetism. One is centrifugal divergence, which is increasing force and motion, i.e. true magnetism. True magnetism. What we have here is centripetal convergence, i.e. increasing inertia. Increasing acceleration and inertia. But a Gauss meter can't tell that, and this is something that nobody knows, and it's one of the many secrets that I've, uh, that I've enumerated in my book, which is free, by the way. Um, but if you, uh, if you apply this to your gold extraction in this video, and the second video where I list the details, you're going to make a lot more money, and you're going to extract a lot more gold. That's a hardcore damn fact. Look at my eye. No flim flam, no bull crap. Hardcore damn fact. More and better gold extraction, period. Okay? Cross my heart, hope to die, flat out, period. Okay? So now we understand that. We understand that this is not this. This is what people don't understand. Okay? So we know we have bismuth here. Now you can't see this. Obviously you can't feel what I'm feeling. But the, the uh, universe's most diamagnetic, i.e. low magnetic permeability element, is perfectly happy hit, sitting right here. I'm going to show you this aluminum foil in a second because uh, I can't really show you that with this huge, heavy, this is heavier than lead, by the way, bismuth is. But right here, if you actually pass this across the magnet, what you'll feel is a speed bump right here at the edge, then almost like a vacuum point in the center, and then another speed bump over here. Then I'm going to point you to a video to another gold extractor, and he demonstrates this using a gold coin, like a one-tenth ounce across the magnet, but he doesn't realize it. He actually is using a gold coin that's passing through an aluminum trough over a 2 by 2 inch, uh, 2 by 2 by 1 inch neodymium iron boron, which is probably an N45 or N50 Gauss magnet. And what happens is it breaks right at the edge of the square magnet, and then it speeds up again right here, and then it breaks again here. See, he doesn't realize it. Nobody else knows this, and I've made videos about this in the past months. And I've been working on this issue 
now for about a month because I've had gold extractors know that they can use, due to this guy's video and one other person, use magnetism for gold extraction. But they don't know what's going on. So they're doing something better, like this guy's video below, but they're not doing something much, much, much better, which they can be doing. So let me show you that with the aluminum foil. Okay, you'll be able to see it because it's very thin. It's just regular kitchen aluminum foil. Now if you look really closely, if you look closely and slow this video down, okay, the only way I could demonstrate this is with the huge ass magnet. And who is packing around a gigantic, dangerous thousand dollar magnet like this with a huge surface area? It actually does hurt your face. It actually makes your eyeballs throb to the chromatomes in your eyes. But what happens is when I pass this aluminum foil, you'll see that I actually encounter a speed bump, then a trough right here, and then another speed bump here. This is what I mean by magnetism is not magnetism. It means what is occurring at the outside edge, doesn't matter if it's round or square, what sort of shape the magnet is, okay? It's all the same. On either pole of a magnet, conventionally speaking, we do not have, okay, we got uh, centrifugal divergence. You can have magnetism coming out here and going to the other side and vice versa. That's not the case. We have centrifugal divergence. Think of like a shooting water jet, okay, that's forming a torus, a donut. And what we have here is like a drain in the bathtub, okay? Two totally different sorts of things. The same reason that the world's most diamag, the universe's most diamagnetic element uh, loves to be sucked in here, for lack of a better word, to make things really simple, and encounters a speed bump over here, okay, is because, you know, well, it should be equally repulsed by conventional logic, because humans don't understand magnetism, but I do. Yes, this fat, bald, tattooed guy in front of you has spent years uncovering the missing secrets of magnetism, and this is going to help you with gold extraction. I absolutely guarantee you, no flim flam, no BS, Period. Flat out, and you're going to understand that. But I have to demonstrate these principles as facts to you first in understanding field dynamics, diamagnetic, uh, excuse me, diamagnetism, paramagnetism, okay, magnetic permeability, and dielectric permittivity. See, now, the universe's most diamagnetic, hates magnetism element is extremely, uh, has an extremely high dielectric permittivity. That means it is happy resting here, but over here it encounters a speed bump. And I'm going to show you how to apply this to gold extraction by only using the centrifugal edge of permanent ceramic, permanent ceramic magnets like this. So people are using them incorrectly. They know that they can use the uh, diamagnetism of gold for better extraction and sluicing, but they're using the magnets incorrectly. There needs to be a special array and a special arrangement. So what you see here on the aluminum, okay, it's like, well, this is aluminum, it's not gold. Well, guess what? This aluminum behaves exactly the same way in its uh, magnetic permeability and its dielectric permittivity as gold does. Pure damn flat out fact, okay? You see this? Bump on either corner, but in the center, it gets sucked in, okay? This is not airflow. You'll actually notice a bump, okay? Or if I just lay it flat like this, okay? Okay, well, let me show this. I'm going to cover this with a piece of plastic so I don't scratch it. These are two sheets of copper, okay? Extremely low magnetic permeability. Copper is known by Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, the gods of electrical engineering, as a dielectric reflector. In other words, it is reflecting magnetism. Now you'll see, now these are heavy copper plates. Okay, obviously, now let's see what happens here. Oh my god, what's going on? Yeah, right. Now what you can't see here, that I could show you with the aluminum foil, and I could show you with the compass, is we have two zones that are totally different. A gauss meter will read the center the same as the edge. And this is how you're going to apply this to gold extraction. Okay? So let's do that demonstration one more time. Brass flywheel, brass flywheel on this gyroscope. Mostly copper. Okay? The point of centripetal convergence. Sit there, spin, 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 spin. Same thing. Well, we put it over here, where the true magnetism exists, and this is what gold hates, okay, immediately spin down, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to use the centrifugal only, centrifugal divergent zone of true magnetism, which is not here, not here, not here, but here only. doesn't matter if it's a square magnet, a round magnet, okay, a cylindrical magnet, same thing. We're only going to be using this 
to break the gold as it's passing through the sluice box and it's going to hit the whiffles and I'm going to show you in the second video how to use this field geometry. So there's two geometries in the universe, okay? And now I'm one of those uh, uh, super intelligent uh, savant weirdos. Yeah, I might be covered in tattoos and bald and look strange and talk kind of funny, but I understand a lot of really important crap that other people don't give a damn about. And sometimes this is useful, and this is going to be one of those times. So I'm going to show you how to break the force and motion of the gold passing through that sluice box by only using the centrifugal divergence to engage the diamagnetic properties of gold especially gold dust. Any gold uh, sluicer, I know this for a fact, okay? You, you all know this if, you, if you're sluicing for gold. Or, uh, the, uh, the, most of the gold that's lost is the fine powdery stuff that gets caught up in the fast-moving water current. You know, you've got to move gravel. You've got to move dirt, okay? We know that for a fact. I've got one design here in the second video that I'm not going to tell people, but I'm going to tell you the primary design in the second video of what you need to do to greatly, greatly capture more gold, okay, and capture a larger quantity, but most importantly, capture the important crap that gets washed out of the sluice box. This can be applied on a larger scale. And that's where most of the gold is. It's that fine powdery crap that ends up being shot out because its ultimate weight, its mass, is so little that it never captures in the whiffles of the sluicing. And we're going to do that by employing an understanding of a diamagnetic permeability and dielectric permittivity. See, what people are doing wrong is that gold, just like this, now this is the universe's most diamagnetic, this is gold is diamagnetic. Well, this is the universe's most diamagnetic element. It is happy sitting right here. But people don't understand that this isn't magnetism. Well, sure it's magnetism. I stick a Gauss meter here, it'll read the same flux density here. So yeah, but this is centrifugal divergence and this is centripetal converge. Serious difference. So you can do something better, but we can do something a lot, 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 lot better. And this is directly applicable to gold extraction. So check out video number two, and I'm going to tell you how to do that. Okay? And this is the only video, this video and the next one, that uh, I would ask you to make a donation. You know, you don't have to do anything. This information is free. Okay? But the, if you use this, these principles, you are going to make a lot more money. Okay? I can't stand scammers. Look at I'm a person that loves wisdom and truth. That is all I live by. This video is free to watch. Use it what you want. You can say, I don't give a damn about him. But I guarantee you, right now, serious as a freaking heart attack. Serious as life and death because life is too short. Okay? I don't believe in flim-flamming people. You know? But, you know, I still have to live. Uh, if you want to make a donation, go ahead and do that. If you want to do it after you've actually implemented this and you see, damn, you know that fat, bald so-and-so that I watched on a YouTube video, exactly what he said works. This guy wrote a book on magnetism that is insanely popular. It's totally free. He's not making any money off the book. This guy actually knows what the hell is going on, especially regarding I am an expert in field theory. Now, you would not think that by looking at me, all these tattoos, well, I don't give a damn. Okay, these are facts, okay? They work, and it will work. So check out video number two, and I'm going to prove to you, show you, that this will work. And the only thing that you're going to have to do is buy the magnets and actually build the device. It will cost you maybe $200. Depends on where you get your neodymiums from. And it's going to take you, uh, depending on what sort of setup you do, you know, three or four or five hours to implement. But I guarantee you, serious is a heart attack right now, that what I've told you is 100% true, and you will, damn for fact, extract gold uh, using uh, my principles as I lay out in the second video. Okay? Look at me. I'm 100% serious. No nonsense. This will work. It does work. Period. Okay? Thank you, and check out the second video, and I'll show you what to do. Okay? Bye. Loxi Veritas.